Imagine this. You go back or ahead of time to you being nine years old. Imagine that it is your first day in a completely new school, country, and environment. You moved from a hot and beautiful place where your biggest worry was which friend to play with. You're happy, living your childhood, playing with dolls, eating ice cream, with no responsibilities going through your mind. When the clock finally strikes 12.05, you rush out of the classroom, along with all the other kids, <laughs> grab the hot thermos your mom prepared for you in the morning, and head to your first lunch at this school. When you sit down on the table with some kids in your class, this little girl you've briefly seen before comes up to you and says these exact words. Even though we just met, I'm sorry to say this, Lily, but you're fat. I know, <laughs> that's exactly what she said. I wish I was joking, but I'm not. It's exactly what happened to me. And even though it's funny to think of now, the fact that it has stuck with me after all these years really shows how big of an impact it has made on me. In general, being a chubby kid my entire childhood really inflicted upon how people viewed and treated me, which has led to many more of these types of interactions to occur. So much so that in my eighth grade year, I developed really unhealthy eating habits, which led me to lose quite a bit of weight in not a lot of time. After my weight loss, I noticed that people started treating me differently, better. And even though they made me feel better about myself, I still had something that was wrong about me in society's eyes. Actually, quite a lot of things. My nose, my big thighs, my big feet, my face shape more insecurities to haunt my thoughts. Especially being on social media from the age of 13, I've personally been guilty of comparing myself to people who get praised for their bodies or faces which are in the beauty standard at the time that I'll never be able to obtain. Hello. So <laughs> Therefore, a pattern I've noticed is that if people keep trying to obtain perfection and adhere to these standards, you'll never be fully satisfied with yourself and your body image. Hi, <laughs> I'm Liana Spaziani, and I'm here to tell you that you'll never be perfect. According to Dr. Lenardin, 50% of 13-year-old American girls have reported being unhappy with their body. This number grew to up to nearly 80% by the time they reached the 17 years of age. Furthermore, between 30 and 40% of men are anxious about their weight, and 85% are anxious about their muscularity. So what instigates us to have these ideas and satisfactions about ourselves? Because thinking about it logistically, if we didn't have any standards slapped in our faces everywhere we went, we wouldn't notice what's wrong with us, because there simply wouldn't be anything wrong. Wrong wouldn't exist. The truth is that capitalist companies whose main goal is to generate income create these standards as ways of advertising their products. There are new products constantly being produced to cover up imperfections, like foundation to cover up blemishes, or protein snacks to help you gain or lose weight, which makes people think that these imperfections are not totally normal and human traits. It obviously doesn't help if most of these advertisements are, have people who all look fairly similar and all fit into one specific beauty ideal, which makes people with just human bodies and human traits to compare themselves to these models they've probably never seen in real life. Which leads me to my next point. Most of us forget that photo manipulation is a very much real thing. In fact, over 90% of companies have admitted to using some form of Photoshop in their advertisements. This means that most of what is being advertised to us isn't even real. So why do we feel like we need to attain to these standards if there's something that can't be obtained naturally? Well, going back to my previous point, it's because we as these companies use advertising str um, strategies to make us feel that like we don't belong if we won't use their products and fit into the standard. And I think as everybody in this room knows, the feeling of not belonging is a really mentally draining feeling that nobody wants to be in. Therefore, naturally, us as consumers will feel persuaded to, invade in, to invest in these products. 
So if this is all fake, why do we care? I don't know whatsoever, you tell me. If we keep having this mentality of always wanting to attain perfections and attain to these standards, then we'll never be, never be fully satisfied with ourselves because every time we accomplish something, adhere to a standard or surpass someone in a subject, there will always be something else to accomplish, another standard to adhere to and someone else to surpass in another subject. So why care? Life is too beautiful and too short to be thinking about these superficial things that won't matter in the long run. This is me when I was nine years old, victim of insecurities projected by beauty standards. And if I could talk to myself right now, I would <laughs> give her a hug. And I would say that beauty is a passive feature. Making memories and having fun are active things that you'll remember at the end of your life, not how you look like doing them. Live and enjoy your life. You deserve it. Thank you.